Let's see. All right, Shot Town. We should be live now. You can cue the show production. Inglewood in the building. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Yes, sir. Like, share, subscribe. In entering upon this course of instruction, each of you should, so far as possible, lay aside for the time being all previous theories and beliefs. By so doing, you will be saved the trouble of trying all the way through the show to put, quote, new wine into old wineskins, end quote. Luke chapter 5, verse 37. If there is anything as we proceed which you don't understand or agree with, just let it lie passively in your mind until you have enjoyed the entire show. For many statements that would at first arouse antagonism and discussion will be clear and easily accepted a little farther on. After the show is over, if you wish to return to your old beliefs and ways of living, you are at perfect liberty to do so. But for the time being, be willing to become as a little child, for said the master in spiritual things, quote, except ye become as little children, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven, end quote. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. If at times there seems to be repetition, please remember, the self-love show is a lesson, not a lecture. I'm not saying I'm going to rule the world or I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee that I will spark the, the, the brain that will change the world. And that's our job, is to spark somebody else watching us. We, we might not be the ones, but let's not be selfish and because we're not going to change the world, let's not talk about how we should change. 24 years ago today, iconic rapper Tupac Shakur was shot here in Las Vegas. A rapper was shot inside of a BMW while stopped at a red light on Koval and Flamingo. We all know the story. He then died six days later. The shooting happened after a Mike Tyson fight against Bruce Sheldon at MGM Grand. And then there was a brawl inside of the lobby right after that fight. Tupac was in the car with Marion Suge Knight, who was grazed by a bullet. No one has ever been arrested for Tupac's murder. <laughs> No block. It's 10 o'clock. Where the fuck y'all niggas at? This is that one of me in Chicago. No block right here. I shit call this shit. No block. It's 10 o'clock. Where the fuck y'all niggas at? Niggas ain't outside. It's only 10 p.m. Where the fuck y'all niggas at, blood? No block right now. Where we at? Tell you something, man. This ain't no ground, man. I'm live on old block right now. Where we at? This old block. I'm from Miami. I just want to tell niggas, man, we got to stop killing each other, man. Yeah, this shit ain't about nothing. All that killing shit, we got to work together, man. Stop killing each other, my nigga. I had to come over here and tell niggas that shit, my nigga. I'm right here. See why I'm at. I'm out here. Black Star Line Cigars. From grown man. On some grown man stuff. And to the PDs, stop doing that killing. Please, stop doing that killing.
If I could be a service to a nine-year-old girl or a 19-year-old woman or girl who wants to be a woman, um, is to is to really is to re really remember that self-love is the best way that you can receive love from anybody else because it's coming from you. A lot of times we forget that we like look externally for this love. We look externally for this feeling of validation and adoration and approval and it has to come from within. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Self-love, cue the music. Yes, sir. I'm just a kid from Chicago. Shout town kids are most definitely in the building. What down, what down, what down. Self-love vision. Trying to make a way ah, Much better. We got an informative. Back against the wall. Um, show lined up for you today could be controversial these are lessons not lectures hanging there to the end we should be able to make it make sense welcome to Chi Town's very own the self-love show we got two mottos our first motto is on earth as it is in heaven Praise to the ancestors. Happy heavenly birthday to my mom, Mama Sky. Motto number two. As above, so below. We can be found right here on our YouTube channel. This ain't that network. This most definitely ain't MSNBC or Fox, ABC, NBC, Disney. ESPN Most definitely not none of that But this is This ain't that network T18 This is my mama's song Big up Scooter Joe's this is one of the co-hosts, Nine Millie, also known as Self. What down, what down, what down, Shot Town, what down, and all, what down, what down, what down. Repeat after he. I am greater than my excuse. I am 
it's greater than my excuse. Third time's for the charm. I am greater than my excuse. Today is Wednesday. We over the hump. 316-2022. As always, we acknowledge you cats could be any place in this magnanimous universe. And thankfully, we all Scooter chose to be here together. Here together. What down, what down, what down, brother Word Smith? What say ye, sir? Man, I'm manifesting love. That's what I'm doing. What yeah. you on? Yeah, I hear that, man. I'm vibrating the same thing. Vibrating love, bro. Uh, some say harsh. Others say harsh. Sometimes it's tough. But it's love just the same, bro. Love just the same. No doubt. Hey, what's been going on in your uh, neck of the shot, fam? Well, the nature been playing the fool. <laughs> Excuse me. Been playing the fool. Like, goes from snow to 60. Then it was 70. And then it had some more snow. And then, you know, 60 again today. Almost 70 today. Hey, seventy's better than twenty below. Hey, uh, Yoda, I'm the overseer. He said he's greater than his excuse. Yoda, uh, my other club, our other club, uh, TLC three. He lurking from the Nastyville. Woo, yo, yo, yo. All right. So um, before we jump this off, as always, we um, want to tell you what what we got planned for today. We always run over the self-love shows quote of the day and then our MGD video, which is more growth and development. Um, It's a very short video. It tells you what the platform is, what our foundation is, what we're standing on. Then, of course, we jump over to um, we run a short video. We always call Tattoo Tyranny. Self-love and I, we unpack that, react to it and uh, determine if it's tyrannical or not. Then, of course, we always have our riddle du jour, riddle of the day, a.k.a. the dome teaser. And big topic, the transatlantic slave trade, fact or fiction. And then um, towards the end of the show, we'll wrap it up with next week's sneak peek. And then uh, close it out with my personal favorite part of the whole shebang, and that's uh, Brother Wordsmith's. Final words out there, out there, out there. Hey, you got any announcements, Snoop? Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, share far and wide. Let's get it to the people. Absolutely. Um, I want to echo his sentiment. Let's get let's get her done. And uh, you know, smash that thumbs up as well. That's the share, that's the like part of it. So uh let's get that done. And, uh, yeah, once again, happy heavenly birthday to Mama Sky. Uh, that's Say Eureka, Africa. Yes, yes. Happy, happy birthday. Yes. May she rest in heaven and hopefully she's enjoying the show. And if there's anybody um, out in the chat, any historians or you heard any family stories about whether or not you know, your ancestors were on the plantation or something like that. We want to hear about it. Maybe they never were, quote, unquote, prisoners of war or vis-a-vis slavery. Maybe they were, you know, property owners, senators and things like that. Uh, we want to uh, definitely hear from you in the chat. And if you have any questions, uh, have at it. If they're of a respectful nature, then obviously we'll address those questions or comments uh, <laughs> to the best of our ability. Uh, but enough of my yapping. I'm going to turn it over to this brother to my right, uh, self-love, so he can handle his business. Welcome to the show. Glad y'all are here. As always, we have the self-love show quote of the day, followed by the more growth and development platform, which we're building the self-love nation off of. But first, the self-love show quote of the day. How can a Negro say America is his nation? He was brought here in chains. 
He was put in slavery and worked like a mule for 300 years. He was separated from his land, his culture, his God, his language. Once again, how can a Negro say America is his nation? He was brought here in chains. He was put in slavery and worked like a mule for 300 years. He was separated from his land, his culture, his God, his language, Malcolm X. Check out this video coming at you. Silverback, more growth and development platform. Number one, repair our nation via reparation. We demand our silver back. Number two, to connect our breadwinners with our activists. And three, show an accurate depiction of African-American shy town. Four, to shine a light on positive influence. Five, heal our community one person at a time. Six, provide an unfiltered platform for our influencers. Seven, recycle the black dollar. Eight, to provide mentors for the mentorless. Nine, Nine. close the gap between us and our pink kinsmen. Yes, get it closed. Closing the gap. Delf Love, uh, we have number 10. Uh, what's number 10, sir? Protect our women and children by all means necessary. Facts. Facts. Any and all means necessary all the time. Let's get that done. And I want to give a, a big ups and a yo uh, to the young buck, um, Daniel Johnson. Yes. From our Life After College show. Nice to get that perspective, huh, Self Love? Yeah. Excellent. A lot of gems. A lot of gems. Yeah, you know, he picked uh, the dreamer over uh, Earl B. Dickerson. That was a first. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> that should tell you something there. <laughs> that should tell you something. But thanks, bro. And uh, Noop, you're always welcome uh, to return, um, you know, as well. You know, we, we'll chat it up with you. You know, he's he's working at Google and at Big Google and uh, doing his thing. Huh? So, yep. Marketing. Yeah. On a high level. So. Facts. We'll, Keep it cheap. We'll be shooting you some music, so. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, and you got to get us uh, marketing on social media for the Self Love Show. Facts. All right. Uh, so, Self Love, did you hear about Twelve is suing Twelve? Did you hear about that? Mm, no, nah, you know I'm pretty much unplugged. That's all right. Our crack uh, team, uh, production squad's got it all queued up for you. Judy, Michael Cooper tonight is suing two Minnesota State Patrol officers who hold the same position he had held for decades with the Illinois State Police. Cooper alleging his humiliating and unlawful arrest by those Minnesota officers a year ago. As the I-Team first reported last year, Cooper was a contract security How officer protecting CNN crews during unrest that followed George Floyd's murder. Twin City streets were in flames on May 29th last year. A CNN black Latinx correspondent had already been taken away in handcuffs in a live on TV arrest that had embarrassed city and state leaders who promised it wouldn't happen again. A day later, it did, when Cooper says he was trying to escort CNN news personnel to a safe location. We had started filming at about 4 o'clock. At which time I noticed an element. He uh, sounded like Obama. Uh, different elements started coming in uh, yes. of people. They were dressed all in black. They were carrying bags. Sound just like gasoline. <laughs> Cooper, who had been heralded for solving cold case crimes during his years with Illinois State Police, told the I team he was legally carrying two guns that night and his media credentials, as seen in this photo. 
Tonight, he says the only thing that prompted his arrest by Minnesota state officers was the color of his skin. Did a, a felony stop is what we call it. You know, they had me turn around. They had me walk backwards. They had me go to get on my knees. They had me lie down, put my hands behind me, palms up. I had my ID in my hand the whole time, palms up, at which time they approached me. They grabbed my arms. They cuffed me. They left me there for a bit. Minnesota State Patrol officials tonight say they disagree with the allegations and provided this arrest report stating Cooper had no credentials on him. Cooper and CNN crew members with the former Illinois State Trooper that night tell a different story. He was locked up for 20 hours here in Hennepin County Jail and released with no charges ever filed. Mm. He says what he told us in November still applies. I'm still trying to, to, to cope with it and, you know, I still wake up thinking about it. How could this happen? CNN is not named as a defendant in the lawsuit, just the two state patrol officers who arrested Mike Cooper. And it is a suit that could easily have been avoided, according to Cooper, had those Minnesota troopers simply apologized. They didn't, and so tonight they're being sued for $1 million in damages. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, wow is right. Uh, what do you got to say about that, self? That there, yeah, that's all the tattoo tyranny. That's tyranny. It's supposed yeah. to be a free press and all of that. They're not supposed to mess with those guys. Yeah, yeah. And he was legally carrying. I think it's only illegal. We we covered this on our gun show a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he was legally carrying, and you know it's only a crime when you're strapped if you're black. Yeah, and didn't charge him with anything. Just held him for twenty hours. That's just uh, that's tyranny. Yeah, yeah. I guess legally the slave catcher can hold you for up to 24 hours without charging you with anything. Yeah, that's tyranny. I concur. So we would both agree that uh, tyranny through and through. I hope this guy wins this lawsuit, although it's going to come from uh, taxpayers. Yeah. Yet and still, they, you know, they need some recompense when they go on ahead and do some garbage like that. Yeah, they wouldn't even apologize. So, uh, you guys, uh, today's topic is the transatlantic slave trade, fact or fiction. That's what we're here for. Um, and as always, uh, we do have a dome teaser uh, for you guys. Um, it's really for Tory because most of you guys don't even have the gumption or the compunction to uh, take a shot at it. So uh, here we go. Exercise your visual faculties prior to executing a jump. What is the proverb? One more time. Exercise your visual faculties prior to executing a jump. What is the proverb? All right. Self-love has that one and he has it. You guys should have it. And he typed it in. I can confirm that that is correct. And um, yeah, so if you guys feel like you know it as well, have at it. So, but uh, enough of the appetizers. Let's quench the self love nation's thirst. Yeah, in my magic cup, we're going to quench the thirst. <laughs> All right. Um, so, if production can run the uh, promo video. Big ups to production. Uh, but on 316, which is my uh, beloved mom's rest her soul's birthday. They have done this trick everywhere, here in America, to the Indians. He sent one priest to the Indians in uh, New York, and another priest to the Indians in, in Pennsylvania. And he just brought them to tell lies to both Indians. And the Indians who had never been at war with each other would start beating the tom the war drum. And then as they got ready to come together and fight, the priest would run in and say, let me be the mediator. The New York Indians, you move out from Minnesota. And the Pennsylvania Indians, you move out to Oklahoma. 
that would leave the whole state of New York and Pennsylvania for the white man. You see how he does it? You see how he does it? We're covering the transatlantic slave trade. Fact or fiction? People don't understand. Black people did not just come from Africa. Black people were already in the States. And people got to do their history to understand black people were already in the States. People don't know that, though. They don't get that part. Got a lot to unpack next week. Can I just end with this one thing? These four brothers sitting here, we didn't all come from Africa. And there was a united, there was, there was a country before 1492, and our history goes way beyond 1492. So you can't start us at 1492. We were always here. We were always here. <laughs> because however much America strays away from the ideals of justice, the goal of America is freedom. Abused and scorned though we may be, our destiny is tied up in the destiny of America. Before the Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before Jefferson etched across the pages of history the majestic words of the Declaration of Independence, we were here. Before the beautiful words of the Star Spangled Banner were written, we were here. Hey, bros, what's going on? This is Cotton Eye Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Because subscribing makes you feel good. Do you still have them? Great job, production. So we have uh, a comment. You can kill it. We have a comment from Omni Overseer. Uh, he said, they did bring some slaves and made slaves out of us here. We're going to get into that. Um, and uh, I'll let you know my position on that as well. Uh, great comment, though. Thanks. So what is the reported history pertaining to the transatlantic slave trade? What do you know about what what, the, what we were taught, you know, in school or in history class? That they brought millions upon millions from there to here, and so much that it was a hundred million loss in between. Yeah, and not just here, but um, like Haiti, um, Brazil, All of the Caribbean, yeah. yeah, yeah, all of America, South it's, Central. So, go ahead, go ahead. South Central, the Caribbean islands, and uh, North America. Yeah, and those big numbers. So you're saying you you, you understand that. A hundred million were lost, and 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 uh, three hundred million allegedly made it here, right? Yes. Now you know, um, you guys. Uh, I suggest you subscribe to Dane Calloway, just like it sounds. Um, he's an African American historian, and he actually got uh, them to amend this history because, as I was researching itself, you don't find that big number anymore no he recently got it all the way down to eighty thousand or something yeah yeah so um i'll um this is an article by um henry lewis gates jr uh, it was originally posted on the route and it's how many slaves landed in the u.s Perhaps you, like me, were raised essentially to think of the slave experience primarily in terms of our black ancestors here in the U.S. In other words, slavery was primarily about us, right from Crispus Attucks and Phyllis Wheatley, Benjamin Banneker, and Richard Allen, all the way to Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Frederick Douglass. 
think of this as an instance of what we might think of as African-American exceptionalism, or in other words, if it's in the black experience, it's got to be about black Americans. We'll think again. The most comprehensive analysis of shipping records over the course of the slave trade is the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database, edited by professors David Eltis and David Richardson. While the editors are careful to say that all their figures are estimates, I believe that they are the best estimates that we have, the proverbial gold standard in this field of study of the slave trade. Between 1525 and 1866, Put that in context, my great-grandmother, my maternal great-grandmother was born in 1888. So between 1525 and 1866, in the entire history of the slave trade to the New World, according to the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database, 12.5 million Africans were shipped to the New World. 10.7 million survived the dreaded Middle Passage, disembarking in North America, the Caribbean, and South America. And how many of these 10.7 million Africans were shipped directly to North America? Um, we'll save that. So that's the figure self um, that Gates is, is calling the gold standard, and this was through PBS. That's still lower than what the nonsense they were feeding us back in the day. Absolutely. You know, um, but let's, you know, We'll get into it, but if you think about, uh, we'll we'll get there. But where are the boats? You know, um, who where made the all these? Yeah, who made all these boats? Who were captaining all these boats? Um, so these are the things that we're looking at. And like self said, there you know, there's no record. You know, you have a record of a few boats that they talk about all the time, but you don't get records of all the boats. You don't really get records of the boats. It just say it, say it, you know, the name of it. And we'll say who the captain is, the ones that they speak about. Yeah, like the Amistad and all that. Yeah. Who made money? Uh, who was profiting off of just trading the slaves? Who was doing that? Um, they were saying that it was a... Uh, Different banks was involved with it, insurance companies was involved with it. Um, my mind just blank. Uh, yeah, you had um, the Queen of, uh, at the time, of England was a major investor in, the, in one of the slave trading corporations. Facts. And as you said, um, so the, the Portuguese um, started it according to white people's history. So oh they goodness, were I was blinking off. <laughs> yeah, they were big in it, man, and they kept it going even after the the English stopped. Um, they were this. They're alleging that by the 1480s, Portuguese ships were already transporting Africans for use as enslaved laborers on the sugar plantations in Cape Verde and Madeira Islands in the Eastern Atlantic. The Spanish conquistadors took enslaved Africans to the Caribbean. These are the people of color. To the Caribbean after 1502. But Portuguese merchants continued to dominate the transatlantic slave trade for another century and a half, operating from their bases in the Congo, Angola area, along the west coast of Africa. That's why you had you know, so many Moors here. The Dutch became the foremost traders of enslaved people during parts of the 1600s. And in the following century, English and French merchants controlled about half of the transatlantic slave trade, taking a large percentage of the human cargo from the region of West Africa between the Senegal and Niger rivers. In 1713, an agreement between Spain and Britain granted the British a monopoly on the trade of enslaved people with the Spanish colonies. Under the Asento de Negros, Britain was entitled to supply those colonies with 4,800 enslaved Africans per year for 30 years. 
The contract for the supply was assigned to the South Sea Company. That's it. The South Sea Company, of which the British Queen Anne held 22.5% of their stock. Probably no more than a few hundred thousand Africans were taken to the Americas before 1600. In the 17th century, however, demand for enslaved labor rose sharply with the growth of sugar plantations in the Caribbean and tobacco plantations in the Chesapeake region in North America. The largest numbers of enslaved people were taken to the Americas during the 18th century, when according to historians' estimates, nearly three-fifths of the total volume of the transatlantic slave trade took place. This trade had devastating effects in Africa, Economic incentives for warlords and tribes to engage in the trade of enslaved people promoted an atmosphere of lawlessness and violence. Depopulation and a continuing fear of captivity made economic and agricultural development almost impossible throughout much of Western Africa. A large percentage of the people taken captive were women, protect the women, in their, child, in their childbearing years, and young men who normally would have been starting families. The European enslavers usually left behind persons who were elderly, disabled, or otherwise dependent groups who were least able to contribute to the economic health of their societies. Historians have debated the nature and extent of European and African agency in the actual capture of those who were enslaved. During the early years of the transatlantic slave trade, the Portuguese generally purchased Africans who had been enslaved during tribal wars. As the demand for enslaved people grew, the Portuguese began to enter the interior of Africa to forcibly take captives. As other Europeans became involved in the slave trade, generally they remained on the coast and purchased captives from Africans who transported them from the interior. Following capture, the abduct abducted Africans were marched to the coast, listen to itself, a journey that could be as many as 300 miles. Typically two captives were chained together at the ankle and columns of captives were tied together by ropes around their neck. An estimated 10 to 15% of the captives died on their way to the coast. So that would probably be the beginning passage. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. All right. So, so that was, um, so here we go. Um, so we, 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 we kind of broke down who was making money. As you said, so if it was businesses and it was governments, um, South Sea Company, Queen Anne, so that, that so called royal family has made money off of that. Big money. Yeah, banks. I want to say yeah. Chase Bank, but it wasn't called Chase Bank, but what, you know, turned into Chase Bank. Um, Lords of London. Facts. Facts. Yeah. Um, now, you know, up to 12 million. We're not even going to use the 400 million figure. Up to 12 million over 300 years. So that breaks down to 40,000 annual POWs transported and 3,333 monthly. But it took 90 days to make the Middle Passage for the boats to cross. Yeah. You know how math. many boats would have been on the ocean? Yeah, the math ain't math. <laughs> I, I mean, they would have had to have converted all of their warships. You don't even hear that pirates were doing this. No, it's a difficult uh, journey. They lose boats trying to come from there. It's not say that no, again. You were breaking up. Said, That's probably on my end. Said it's a difficult journey, and they lose boats coming from there to here. So they don't always make it. So, um, the math ain't mathing. 
you know, I, I'm going to have to concur. I mean, it just, I mean, again, 3,000, and we're taking small numbers, 3,333 monthly, and it takes 90 days. So let's say the ship is making a round trip. It takes them a month to get back to Africa to load up another boatload of POWs. Three months, right? Well, three months each way, but round trip is a half year. Right. And and how many boats would it take? How many boats were, how many could they put in a boat? Because we know that that drawing that they showed us is fictitious. You mean with everybody laying on top of each other? Yeah. That's the only way they can make it work. Uh, Try to make the numbers giant. Yeah. You know, they, uh, but well, let's, let's see. I mean, that's a good question. I mean, how many could have been on each boat? And how many to control them? And where is all the the water and, you know, provisions that you need? Where you store the provisions if the whole bottom is filled with people you stole? Yeah. Let me see if I can find that answer. Let's see. How uh, many slaves that would give us a, a clue to how many boats so that means that one boat can only get two boat loads so it, it says ships carried anywhere from 250 to 600 slaves so we're going to take the high number we're going to take 600 slaves wait a minute what kind of boat could take at that time. Yeah, well, 250 to 600. So, and this is just with Britain's, um, what they started doing after that agreement was signed. So they had a contract to do 40,000 slaves annually. So, seems plausible. Well, K- well, KOL, what's up? I mean, the the six hundred on a boat, and like you said, where are the supplies? And yeah, that doesn't what, seem plausible. No, I'm trying to figure out what boat they have that at that time period could hold six hundred people like that. And why do we have so called dinosaurs in museums, and we don't have more of these boats, or one of them, for that matter? Uh, I mean, these are the questions we're asking. And uh, what up, Waquil? Um, you can uh, anybody can feel free to chime in uh, in the uh, te- in the chat. Let us know um, what your feedback is on this. But that's part of um, you know I'm not breaking this down as well as some of these other guys have because I'm not um, you know as versed as well versed as they are. That's why I say check out some of these channels and they'll um, break down to you why it just doesn't make sense. Um, You know, when you start with even that beginning passage, you know, 300 miles. So, yeah, that's that. After walking 300 miles, you're stuffed on a boat with up to 600 people chained together for 90 days. Now I did the math. It takes me walking at a, a, a you know, a, a well-fed pace without being chained and roped to people. You know, for me to walk a mile, it takes me about 30 minutes. So we're talking 150 hours, 24 hours in a day. So that's a 20 day walk. Well, they got to stop. So that's like a month walk and then a 90 day journey on a boat. That's the essence. It's crazy. 
Yeah, it is. It is. And and um, apparently there are a lot more homicides than America would like us to know. There are. I'm sure. They, yeah. They change all that history and make it his story instead of what actually happened. Yeah, and and praise uh, to the ancestors. Um, well, I know I you know I can't speak on self love's behalf, um, but I'm you know I'm not prepared to say that. Well, we'll get there, but um, I am prepared to say something happened. It's just the scale yeah. of it that seems just just the them saying that all of us were brought here in chains when right. we taught them how to navigate the earth we taught we, you know we taught them how to find a new world quote end quote we taught them how to farm here because we were already here these my people anyway I mean, those are the uh, Native Americans, according to the history. I was taught in Chicago's public schools. Yeah, I mean, every single, you know, every single explorer that came here, whatever, said they found copper colored people, you know, so called black, you know, every single one. Yeah, and I imagine the red man was, you know, dark as well. Yeah, well, I mean, some of those people that are Native American are, you know, not Aboriginal to this land. Yep. They're labeled as Native American, but they're not Aboriginal to this land, though. And those are the $5 Indians, according yeah. to uh, Dan Calloway. We were classified as uh, American Indians. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, you guys know what that means. We're going to um, unpack more of this in the uh, part two. It's halftime. Let me cut the music off. It's halftime. Thank you all for being here. This is the Self Love Show. Transatlantic. Transatlantic. Atlantic, oh my god, Atlantic slave trade, fact or fiction. We are breaking it down and we're gonna open up and talk about more in the second half. We've got some nice videos for you to check out. It's gonna be three production. And here we go. Yes, my name is Akres from Ghana. And I love the Nine News Network. Let us all get together and learn together and be together so we can be strong together. Amen? Amen. Silver Day. I've been building a nation self-love I'll do, do Though you knew I would never Treason I'm moving too far For supremacy to say That I've got to throw my nation away over drinks I have picked out a perfect just do Though you never knew It was because of you I've been drinking The Sandman has come from too far away just for supremacy to say maybe another day and though they don't believe that dreams do dreams do come true 
forgive my sins and all my transgressions too. And maybe too, if you would believe, we could achieve silver dance, silver bat. Well, what would you tell a young lady, a young woman, or a, a teen lady, or a, a young woman, any woman younger than you, much younger, of course, um, um, you know, about how you navigated or things that can help them if things around them seem uh, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, you know, uh, what word am I looking for, Tori? Things around them seem uh, destitute. Uh, chaotic. Chaotic, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. sound overly simple and it's something sometimes young people don't want to hear but believe me prayer mm. because no one is going to really know how you feel inside about what you're going through even your parents you know it's it's hard to communicate for all of us male and female but for young ladies right now this is a very hard time um, if you're pregnant, be honest. Know if you want to put the child up for adoption or if you want to keep the child and try to understand the consequences for either decision. Mm -hmm. But know that God will help you to raise that child. It's not going to be necessarily an easy road, but the strength that having a child or children give to you it just cannot be exchanged. I know that for a fact. Absolutely. And, and well, it's funny you and, mentioned. Yes. Oh, and go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, and uh, get an education. You can go online, but don't neglect to get an education, not necessarily college, but a trade, something to do so that you can earn money and don't get trapped up in the system for your whole life. Jules, Jules, Jules. I'm say this because, as you know, I raised four children by myself primarily. Jules, Jules from an elder. So, so you mentioned prayer and it just so happened I was uh, doing some reading today and I, I uh, came across a book on like how to pray, proper way to pray. So is there a certain way to pray? Do you agree that there is a way to pray? And if so, what would you suggest to someone who doesn't know how to pray? I would suggest that they immediately go to the library if they don't have a Bible, but everybody has a cell phone. Pull up Psalms, the 23rd chapter. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me beside the still waters for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's right. For thou art with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me and anoint my head with oil. Oh, Father, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then with that, you get quiet and you meditate and listen to what God speaks back to you. Wow. Well, Tori, uh, words, I, I have nothing to say behind that. Yeah. Welcome back to the Self Love Show, where we are breaking down the transatlantic slave trade. Fact or fiction? 
We talked about the history of slave and, and, and what we were taught early on in life and how things have come down from those numbers and they're still going down. This is a joint though. Big up to Trife Mac. Yeah, and um, we had a comment. I'll get to that in the... Um, Okay, so ships carried uh, anything from 250 to 600 slaves. They were generally very overcrowded. In many ships, they were packed like spoons with no room to even turn, allegedly. Although in some ships, a slave could have space about five feet, three inches high and four feet, four inches wide. So I wanted to add that for context. Uh, Omni Overseer says, if you have six boats with 300 slaves, that's 1,800 a trip. How many trips a year could they make? And I mean, you know, these are the questions. These are the questions. You know, that we're here to unpack. Um, slave ships ranged in size from the 10 ton Hesketh, which could carry a crew plus 30 captive Africans to the 566 ton PAR, P-A-R-R, -R, which carried a crew of 100 and could hold a cargo of as many as 700 enslaved. Uh, this is from, I'm reading from Encyclopedia Virginia. And I believe this is what Dane was uh, working with. Um, the lower deck of a slave ship was divided into separate compartments for men and women, with the men shackled together in pairs and the women left unchained, but confined below. And the women didn't attack them. The conditions were appalling, with hundreds of people crowded together with little airflow and even less sanitation. Captive Africans suffered from diseases such as dysentery or dysentery and smallpox, depression, and outright despair. The cruelty of captain and crew in sexual expo exploitation. As a result, mortality rates averaged above 20% for captive Africans in the first decades of the slave trade and about 10% by 1800. The possibility of mutiny or revolt or revolt resulted in heavy handed discipline. Crew and captive cargo were routinely whipped and more extreme forms of violence, including thumb screws, were used to discipline the Africans. Despite this, Africans did resist. Some committed suicide by jumping overboard or refusing to eat while others organized insurrections. Although due to the overwhelming weaponry, weaponry brought to bear by the crew, few attempts at revolt seceded. Between 1500 and 1866, Europeans, we, we went over that, uh, that's the Middle Passage. 1672, the Royal African Company received a monopoly over deliveries of captives. That must be Queen Anne's group to the English Caribbean islands of Barbados and Jamaica before outfitting its own ships. The company hired vessels at a rate of five pounds to six pounds per slave delivered alive to America. The captains of these ships sailed first to Africa where they sold goods, textiles, metals, decorative items, and guns for enslaved Africans who were picked up either directly from African dealers or from coastal forts built by the company to hold already purchased slaves. This human cargo, which usually numbered several hundred people per vessel, was taken to America on the Middle Passage. A few ships came directly to Virginia, while most sold their choices cargo at higher volume ports in Jamaica or South Carolina delivering unsold remainder slaves to the Chesapeake Bay region. An estimated 140,000 enslaved 
captives disembarked in the Chesapeake region, initially to work in tobacco fields. In 1698, the Royal African Company lost its monopoly and soon was eclipsed by private British and American merchants. Those based in Bristol and London dominated the Virginia trade until the 1730s, when the London merchants were overtaken by others based out of Liverpool. Nearly two thirds of the Atlantic slave trade took place between 1698 and the British abolition in 1807-08. The ships and their voyages. Slave ships ranged in size from 10 ton, I read that, um, uh, to the, uh, let's see here. Okay, ships comparable in size to the Hesketh were designed to carry as few as six pleasure passengers refitted as a slaver. The Hesketh transported a crew plus 30 Africans. The Par, on the other hand, carried a crew of 100 and a cargo of as many 700 slaves. Most ships nicknamed Guinea men after the Gulf of Guinea on the west coast of Africa were sized somewhere in between growing in tonnage over time as the Atlantic trade itself grew. American traders preferred somewhat smaller ships than their British counterparts. Two-masted sloops, 25 to 75 tons, and schooners, 30 to 150 tons, required smaller crews and shorter stays on the African coast, where tropical diseases were a constant threat to crew and cargo alike. At first, merchants adapted general merchant vessels for the slave trade. Later, they built ships to the trade, to the trade's particular specifications, which included port holes for better airflow to the lower decks and copper sheath holes to combat the wood rot and boring worms found in tropical waters. Sometimes ships were modified to increase the space between decks, although a typical 140-ton guineaman might have had only four and a half feet between the lower decks floor and ceiling, which would have precluded many of the Africans confined there from standing. The lower deck generally was divided into separate compartments for men and women, with men shackled in pairs. Most women were left unchained, but confined below, while children had the run of the ship. African men and women used the children as a means to communicate with one another, and in some cases to plan insurrection. A wooden grating separated the men's quarters from the main deck and was designed along with portholes to facilitate airflow. Even so, the captives crowded together, unsanitary conditions and oppressive heat. One observer described the area below decks as most impure and stifling. The anonymous author of Liverpool and Slavery, an historical account of the Liverpool African slave trade by a genuine Dickie Sam, in 1884, cited a trader who stated that after remaining 10 minutes in the hold, his shirt was as wet as if it had been in a bucket of water. So close and foul was the stench. The writer said that some enslaved Africans have been known to be put down the hold strong and healthy at night and have been dead in the morning. In addition to seasickness, the captives suffered from dysentery and outbreaks of small parks and smallpox in the crowded <clears throat> conditions. Mortality rates among captives averaged above 20%. The captain and his officers enjoyed personal cabin space, usually below the raised quarter deck at the stern of the ships, while common sailors slept on the main deck, sometimes under cover of a tarpaulin or in a longboat. Also on the main deck, and built especially for the slave ship, was a 10-foot-tall wooden barricade that bisected the deck at the main mast and extended about two feet beyond the ship's sides. The barricado separated the African men from the women, and in case of insurrection, the crew retreated to the women's side and used the barricado as a defensive fortification. Captain William Snellgrave, in a new account of some parts of Guinea in the slave trade in 1734, described how a group of African men endeavored to force the barricado on the quarter deck, not regarding the muskets or half pikes that were presented to their breasts by the white men through the loopholes. Slave ships were well armed in case of insurrection or attack by pirates. According to an officer on the 140-ton diligent, which sailed out of France in 1731 
The ship carried eight four-pound cannons, 55 muskets, 18 pistols, 20 swords, two swivel guns, all in excellent condition. While the ships were still off the coast of Africa, accumulating cargoes could take from a few weeks to several months. So it took that like several months and then three months to, you know, yeah. The crew built a house, a bamboo enclosure on the main deck designed to secure Africans prior to leaving the coast. The sailor James Field Stanfield observed in 1788, um, the business of constructing a house destructive and fatal to the crew because harvesting the bamboo forced crew members to be immersed up to the waist in mud and slime, pestered by snakes, worms, and venomous reptiles, tormented by mosquitoes and a thousand assailing insects, and all the while being whipped and otherwise prodded by their relentless officers. Were they slaves too? Once the ship was ready to begin the middle passage, the crew removed the house and hung netting from the sides of the ship. This was designed to catch anyone who tried to escape by jumping overboard. Although many enslaved Africans committed suicide in this way, so did some crew members who were also tormented by disease, low quality food, and the officers' whips. In the warm waters, sharks often followed the ships, feeding off the bodies of the dead thrown overboard. When dead slaves are thrown overboard, the Dutch merchant William Bosman wrote, I have sometimes, not without horror, seen the dismal rapaciousness of these animals. Four or five of them together shoot to the bottom under the ship to tear the dead corpse to pieces. At each bite, an arm or leg or the head is snapped off. And before you can tell, 20 have sometimes divided the body amongst them so nicely that not the least particle is left. All right, that's all I got. Wow. That was pretty descriptive. Yeah, those are some historical accounts by uh, white men. But, you know, when you do the timing of it all, you know, they're spending months over there building houses and. and yeah, you know, the math ain't mathing. Because, <laughs> you know, it ain't like they come and go straight back and go straight back and come straight back. You know. They might not even be making two trips in a year. Right. And it had to be hard to find crew with the way they're alleging that they were treating the crew. Man. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm going to toss it over to self love. Uh, as far as the Dane Calloway, like, can you give us a summary? Cause you, you've been following him longer than me. Can you kind of summarize what his messaging is? His messaging is, and I don't want to you know, speak for this brother because he's a brilliant guy, but the messaging is that most of us didn't come from Africa, especially in North America, because out of the amount of slaves that came to the Americas, because there was some, and he's got a book, how you can uh, trace your records, is tracing your family's genealogical history by records. And it's a step-by-step -step guide that can help you see if your family came off of those boats, because there are records. Excuse me. He also states that they changed the status of our nationality several times until, you know, it became muddled what we are and labeled us as Black you know or negro mulatto and and until we, we were originally american indians and you'd have your nation on there and uh it would be on your records and they changed that at a per certain time they changed it where it's no longer on your records and uh it's been a lot of Paper genocide is what he says. They've changed us from being American Indians to Negroes, to Black, to African American, where we really have no standing in law. Yeah, and I might add, I think he was saying that, um, you know, why would those in control control the history and, and manipulate it? 
It was basically a land grab to steal yeah. your legacy. Facts. Facts. And, yeah. you know, and he's right in, in so many ways that we still own this land and it still can be proven. Facts. And I'm typing his name in the chat. You guys can go to his uh, channel. I suggest you subscribe to it. If not, just check out, you know, some of the videos and you'll get an idea of, uh, of you know, what his premise is. And it's not just him. You know, right. you saw in those videos we ran where Dr. King was saying we were already here. Yeah. And his, his motto is, I'm just here to make you think. And he don't want you to believe what he say. He wants you to check for yourself. Right. Do the research. Facts. And, but he, he doesn't consider, he's not real big on the morals. No, he's not on that <laughs> at all. He had a video about that recently. All right. So, um, were the original American Indians uh, African Indians? Is that the premise? No, nah, it's always here. I mean, we're cousins, but not the same. So when you say always here, I mean, wouldn't that, so you don't believe that man originated in Africa? No, I do not. Okay, because you know, on the other hand, if the if if man did originate in Africa, I would feel like maybe they just got here long before the white man did. Yeah, I hear you. But the Native Americans say that, or the indigenous people say that they came out of the dirt just like the Africans say of the land. Yeah, yeah of the land. That's what I, I feel. So and I'm not expecting us to know this figure and this is for the chat as well. They're saying somewhere in the neighborhood of 350,000 POWs or, or slaves were brought to the US. And let's assume that that's true. How many would you say were already here when Cadumbus got here. I would have a problem with that number. I, I would think it would be much easier to convert people that were already here, look like black, dark people anyway, and move them around and enslave them would be easier than bringing people from a, a different continent. Yeah, but they're alleging that the uh, indigenous people that were here wouldn't do the work. They'd just lay down and die. Yeah, that's, I think that's uh, his story. <laughs> I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. Yeah, that was a convenient. Um... Where, where are those bodies? Tell me that. Explain that one. Right, so the guns and the cannons put fear in the Africans, and they were willing to work for, for the free. But the indigenous people just wouldn't work. That, that's the story I remember. Right, that's his story. Yeah, his story I remember. Not, yeah, not facts. All right, so if this research, this alternative research, by these historians and and they they'll tell you the books and they're getting the books out of the stacks and stuff like that um you know when you go to their page they'll they'll tag in you know their sources and then um you know talking to family you know i remember somebody asked godfrey who went to u of i um it was uh what's his name he's one of the five percenters him and godfrey Lord, got the Lord show. Jamar. yeah he asked him do you remember your parents or grandparents or any African stories about people being snatched up? And Godfrey said no. Mm -mm. Seems like that'll be a big issue. 
something worth telling your kids about. I would think so. But if this alternative research is accurate, what value would the white man have in keeping us in this quote unquote darkness? The land, the control that they have over a, a lot of things. It's just uh, keep and his... the mind and the mindset. Yeah, if you can convince a man he was a slave or his ancestors were slaves, then yeah, they uh, they they terrorized our ancestors too. Like, better not say you an Indian type of thing. Because remember, it was kind of a shunned saying that you was Indian for the older generations. They didn't like to talk about that. Yeah, one of those rappers, I think it's the one who made 1738. What's his name? Not the drink 1738, but the song was 1738. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it that's two chain? Yeah. Okay. He was on um one of those big chats and he said that. You know, he was running around calling himself African-American and, you know, talking about the, the slavery and all of that. And his, he got his family story and none of that ever happened. And he said, it's funny how even when they come here from different parts of the world, they loop them all into black, like you were saying earlier, yeah. Negro or what have you. And now you're a descendant of slavery. Right. Waka Flocka, the same thing. Waka Flocka, that's who it was. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it wasn't two chains. It was Walker Flock. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, same thing. It was like my family on both sides, like naming the tribes. I said I don't know what African American is. I don't identify with that. Yeah, I know. Um, I was asking my mom, rest her soul, about it. And this is some years ago. Great to hear a voice. Yeah, it's great. And she was, I, we got some more uh, tape too, so from those calls, I just got to dig them up. But um, remember, she was calling at a lot of yeah. shows. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, hope, I hope most of them weren't deleted, you know. But um, she was saying that I was asking her about my great grandmother and, and her husband. You know, he died in the first scamdemic. Uh, Spanish flu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, she was saying that, you know, we weren't slaves or slave or, or sharecroppers. Right. At some point, these so-called immigrants, you know, I mentioned to you is a history in this country of, you know, it's how to keep the gene pool li as light as possible. They'll bring in, I don't want to say white trash, you know, um, but if you can bring in some ignorant poor people and then give them some sort of status as soon as they get to America, you know, and then they're in the gene pool and just like what's happening with uh, Ukraine, you know, oh, pour God. them into the country and give them benefits and welfare and, Man. you know, and money when they get here and then they walk around and say, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Sickening. I don't want to hear they don't have no money for reparations, though. I'll tell you that. 800 million for security for their Ukraine's leaders. Right. 13. Right. Well, didn't they have money? They're a sovereign nation. Man. Why don't they have money? Man, I've been doing some research and it's, you know, the, the people, skin folk, you know, all kin, kin folk ain't skin folk ain't kin folk. All skin folk and kin folk, yeah. Right, and they treated like the, the the black people of the time, if they were had European blood or whatever, treated them like they were white. They didn't treat them like they were the same as, you know, the American Indian or the African slave. Well, they couldn't. You know, they didn't have the numbers and they didn't have control yet. You know, it's like. Um, you know, that's why I don't like that term minority, because when you check 
history in this country, a minority simply meant a non-citizen. And so we go around and call each other minorities. And if right. you're a citizen, you're a citizen. You're not a minority. And that's all a minority was. Right. You know, it's just a little word magic in this uh, language. Yeah, this yeah, language speak. we speak is a spell. Yeah. How, how are we minorities when we're the majority of the planet? It's just their, their spell that they put on us. Actually. You know, and we still listen because they're still taking people, so-called people of color that come from out of the country and counting them as white. Correct. Correct. It's been going on for years when the 40 acres and the mules, they'll come up with some disaster on the other side of the world, although Haiti can have disaster after disaster oh, and they, they keep and, sending those people back. But yeah, like this war and they come up with a reason. And they all, their hearts pour out for those people. You know, like they're literally saying, it hasn't been any war in Europe. What are you talking about? They had a hundred years war. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, Yugoslavia. Wars. Yeah. Yugoslavia was like. In the it, 90s, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and then, you know, and, and. The Palestinians have been getting murdered. Um, Facts. What? Half a billion people were slaughtered in Iraq. But we couldn't let them in because they could be terrorists. So these people coming from Ukraine can't be neo-Nazis? Man, you already know, bro. I mean, they literally had a regiment during the... Um, Maybe we'll do a show on this, but they had a regiment self um, recently in their army in the Ukraine that had the swastika, and nobody in the government did anything about it. No, not at all. And and they're still part of the army. Yes, the, they were had signs up free uh, Derek Chauvin. Yeah, yeah. So these are the people we're letting in this country. Absolutely. And giving them thirteen billion plus eight hundred, so fourteen billion dollars right. for them. So, I, I, and I, they're a democratic nation, and they won't let any people of color out. They're they're turning them away, but letting all of the white people out so they can come through the Mexican border and pile up and get in front of the line in Mexico. Man, how about the media here telling the students to stay put what talking about if oh, anything yeah, was, happens to you it's gonna yeah, put all no, over the tell, place tell and tell it's gonna the black help students. the kremlin yeah tell them the black students yeah 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 the yeah african students it was crazy telling the african students they to stay put black media what? well msnbc but black people in blackface yeah blackface that's it yeah well as we wrap up this topic, self-love, uh, the transatlantic slave trade, in your mind's eye, fact or fiction? And let me define fiction. If any bit of it is false, it's fiction. Well, it's fiction, then. Because it's nothing, it did not happen like they said it did, that's for sure. Yeah, and um, I'm gonna agree fiction but out of deference to my ancestors um i mean you know you guys ask yourself and your families there should be some stories that's been passed down the line about being on the cotton field or tobacco fields or sugar plantations right something a diary something i know my mom's family definitely was in the fields and all that but it was their fields. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, it's your fields. I mean, you know, um, yeah, that's the family land. <laughs> you know, that's the family land. But in deference to the ancestors, um, you know, I'm the overseers. I believe it was uh, six in one hand and half dozen in another. And something you said that seems to resonate. It, it would have been easier to... Um, 
raise slaves or just bring children over and breed yes. them. Yes. Um, seems like that would have been easy to figure out. It wouldn't have taken four or 500 years to, to do that. No, take the children and mold them how you want them. Yes. Yes. Or even the children of the indigenous people who were here. That's what I mean. Yeah. And, and, and across the waters. I mean, it would only make sense because that would, that would mean that they would not, you know, it'd be way less chance they revolt. It actually proves that how many dark people were here because they didn't have numbers and they couldn't pull that self. Right. They couldn't pull it. You know what I mean? And maybe the indigenous people here weren't going to sell, trade their family or, or their uh, indentured servants or people they captured right. in war, you know, to the two Bob, as they called them, or to the pink stink for guns and alcohol and sugar. Steal their children. Right. So they can rape them. Uh, well, can't say that word. Sexually assault them. Right. Yeah, can't say the R word on YouTube. And um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's what I got. Um, you know, I, I still encourage you guys. Uh, what was that other website you said? Check out self. Uh, um, um, I have it here somewhere. So I went to uh, some of his videos too. Can't. Um, Something. Here it is. Curameo. Yeah. A how. Yeah. K U R I M E O. Second name A H A U. I encourage you guys to kind of go through, um, sift through some of his knowledge. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll you know get some understanding of uh, what we're talking about. Basically. Um, as you guys all have known, we're all adults. Uh, that his story, self love, is talking about was uh, a completely adulterated, and it's nonsense at this point. Absolutely, makes no sense at all. And f furthermore, most of their of their his story is just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. You, if you want to get some sort of sense of the history, you go to the first edition of these books. They keep revising these books and changing the stuff, you know. And the proof is how these people are is critical race theory is a high, you know, university class. It's not even taught to undergrads. And they're acting like you're going, you're going to teach it in the classroom and making laws so you can't know the history or you're not taught it at school. What kind of? Yeah, but they could teach you about all this European history up and down in school. Man. And about sex education. But can't teach you what really happened. And then teach you about Rome and all of that and Greece and act like the black people weren't there owning businesses and part of the Senate and, and, you know, doing art and science, just acting like there were no more as far as that's what they call black people then, you know, present. Acting like none of them philosophers didn't learn stole in Alexandria. Right. Right. Act like all of them did. Like they, they spent decades there, but they're the father of, thinking you talking about alexandria in egypt yeah yeah all right well let's jump on man um um i'm gonna go ahead and uh do this riddle here unless you had something else you want to add so before i uh before we wrap it up no i think we did a good job you know y'all check out those people that he mentioned uh Dane Calloway and uh can't say his name right now. Curameo Aho. Yeah, Curameo, yep. Curameo. Yeah. All right. And so um 
No sense in me looking up the answer because self got it right. I repeat the riddle, and we're looking for the proverb here, people, or the saying, the euphemism. Exercise your visual faculties prior to executing a jump. Exercise your visual faculties prior to executing a jump. What's the proverb? Look before you leap. That's it. Look before you leap. 100% right. Self-love does it again. Self-love does it again. And we have a uh, big show um, planned for you guys next week. It's going to be, the guest is going to be announced later. So um, we'll get a promo video out for that. Um, So get ready. And so... Um, be sure to talk to our MBA, mouthpiece included. And uh, that's where we cover uh, sports hot topics of the week uh, from a black first political uh, point of view. And it's an open panel. So you guys can always jump in and pop up. Uh, but don't forget to bring your mouthpiece. Guard your grills, knuckle up. Now, I'm going to turn it over to uh, this snoop to my right for my personal favorite part of the whole shebang. And that's self loves final Tory Wordsmith's final words. Out there, out there, out there. Transatlantic slave trade, fact or fiction? They don't give you too many facts. They act like they've done a lot they never did. And we supposed to believe them because they said. They change his story at the drop of a hat. changed us from native aborigines to African-American and black. So we don't know this is our land. They truly have been brutal erased our history make it a mystery and consume us it's crazy how the whole world benefits off of us except us what are we gonna do We got to figure it out because it's in us that I trust. We must work together and bust this bubble. Tear their institutions down into rubble. Build ours on top of it. Not going to stop with it till we back on top with it. Words. Absolutely. Tear it down into rubble like Barney. Back straight down the rubble. All right, y'all. Um, closing out here. This is a song called Wallow by Emerge McVeigh, who's appeared on The Self Love Show. One of our brothers from my other mothers from the half block back in the hood, neighborhood. 
Um, great message. Big ups to uh, Emerge. I'm trying to change a motherfucker. This a million dollars worth of game. On my wallow shit. See, I'm talking to you niggas because I'm hoping that I'll make you change. On my wallow shit. I'm trying to change a motherfucker. This a million dollars worth of game. Bullets of boomerang. Stand your ground. Murder, suicide. Yeah. Eye for an eye. Silence is violence. You see something, say something. Twelve, twelve, twelve. Greed plus ego over fear is slavery. Charity plus humility times love, freedom. Do not. For any reason, no matter what you're told, under any circumstance, do not answer questions. No matter who says it or where you heard it from, question everything. Fear is fake news. Vibrate love. Forgiveness and charity. Those are the highest self-love vibrations. So do something charitable for a so-called enemy and end a beef. Facts. Facts. End that beef. End it. End it. End it. They tell me hurt people hurt people. Healthy people can heal people. Free the old man, free Larry Hoover now. Free Chief Malik Jeff Ford. Free all the guys, man. Prison is slavery. And y'all can be like St. Pedro. Keep your eyes on Yahshua and you can walk on H2O. Facts. Move mountains. The whole mountain self love. Yeah, like that one right there. That's All we need is the faith of a mustard seed. And we got way more than that.